Here's our second speaker in this session. It is Dr. Hong Chen yes. from GE Global Research. He is the principal and program leader in additive manufacturing. He's for a very long time already with GE Global Research, about 12 years, yeah. and he is going to be able to report about their internal AFX qualification. So Hong, thanks a lot for joining us. We're looking forward to your talk. Great. Thank you. So I'm very happy to be here to share some latest results. Um, we work together with Enlight for the remodelator study. My talk today will focus on how to use a remodelator to improve the productivity, basically printing speed for the power battery fusion machine. Uh, not only the speed, but also people care about the quality. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time about how we can keep the printing quality in the same time, print a little bit faster. So. As you can see, uh, if you walk around the booth, right, people try to improve the printing speed and resolution using different modalities of the printing technology. If you see this chart, right, on the x-axis, you have the printing speed, which is the CC per hour, uh, and on the y-axis is the feature resolution. So your dream machine, what do you have your dream machine? Will be printing as fast as possible and has a fine feature as possible. So I would want to push on that. However, that comes with a cost and also technology limitation. Not all technology can do that with the speed and the cost you want. So as you can see, the traditionally part of the fusion process or people you call the DMMM process, usually it has very good fine resolution. That's probably the best resolution between different modalities. Can go from about 30 to 40 micron up to 100 micron for the fine feature printing. However, the printing speed so far is still considered slow. Um, slow is a relative word. For some high-end application, low volume, people think it's fine. But for mass production, like automobile industry, it's too slow. So people also think about other modality, how you can print it faster. So you have the e-beam, electric beam machine, uh, can go faster. And uh, the downside is you get a rougher resolution. So the spot size uh, is bigger, so you cannot print as a fine feature as a part of the fusion using e-beam. Else people using the direct laser energy deposition, uh, DED process, um, that part you can print even faster. Um, however, people depend on the energy source you are using, right? Using laser beam or using wire, you get an even bigger spot size or wire size. So you can print a very fast speed, probably a 5x faster than power fusion. However, the resolution is way higher. So you have to do post machining a lot. Usually people just do near net shape than do post machining using the DED process. I go further, hey, I want to go even faster. People have other modality, for example, the cold spray. Cold spray is actually director high-speed jet printing the powder directly onto the metal surface because the high momentum of the particles uh, they're going to form a very nice bond joint between different layers. Uh, it's a very uh, a special process. It's a very fast speed. However, it depends on high jet speed. So it's very difficult to control the fine feature when you build up, especially for like a tall thin walls. So um, again, you also have a lot of other techniques. For example, one big thing is a binder jet. Binder jet is a potential technology can bring you probably 50x faster than your laser battery power fusion process. Uh, the cost, since you're pretty much faster, it will be go much lower. However, the binary fusion process, you're going to do centering. The part will shrink the size. It's a lot hard to control the final geometry. Um, and also, the binder and the solver, some technical limitations. So the fine feature size, it's still not as good as the laser power fusion. So what do you want, right? You want to go to the right lower corner. That's where you want to go. Printing faster, but still keep the fine resolution. So what people think about how we can move forward from current state, right? Different vendor, um, they have different approaches. Uh, one common approach is, OK, we add more lasers, uh, multiple laser system, uh, from GE system, M-line, to use very low SAM. People add more lasers into the system, right? More power, which naturally will you per the processing so you can print it faster. It's pretty natural. However, people start to think about, hey, is that more power really give you the speed you want? Is that really in a scale up for the productivity? Is that power can be efficiently used by your powder material? 
So those are the questions people like to ask, and I think we need to keep some deep dive uh, thinking how we can use this more efficient. That's why I think the remote laser can be a lot of benefit from there. So here we actually uh, have our own customized uh, simulation code we can simulate the powder laser interaction very high speed. So we can do some simulation work uh, between different beam profiles. So for typical Gaussian beam profile, you can see, well, when you increase the power, since you have very high peak density at the center, so the keyhole mode will starting to generate very fastly. Um, so you can see on the left side chart is the cross section of the weld bit uh, relative to a power uh, level and also the depths. You can see the cross section ratio. So when the power gets from 100 volt up to 400 volt, you can see the penetration depth is getting deeper. Um, and for get a nice um, printing result, you like to have more like conducting conductive type of weld instead of like a keyhole type of weld. You don't want to penetrate too deep, you want a more stable weld pool with less spatter. And all the things you can see here, you can still see the spatters um, from the edges of the melt pool. Um, you can do different techniques. For example, you can increase the speed uh, to mitigate those penetration depths and reduce the spatter. However, uh, there's a limitation there. At a certain point, you will always get a uh, lot of spatter when you get a very high power at a single mode. So how we can utilize those high power, say you have one kilowatt of laser at a single mode, can you fully use that one kilowatt? Most of the time just can't because it's just too hot in the center, a lot of spatter, the metaphors are not very stable, so you have to find a better way to control your energy distribution to use that energy. Here's another example, we did some simulation work um, between different uh, beam profile. For example, left side you have an idea of Gaussian beam. Uh, in the middle you have like a donut shape. You can change the inside and outside ring diameter from our simulation code. Uh, you can see there's a, a small donut and even bigger, fatter donut here. And you can see from the uh, Gaussian beam simulation between the other two, and you can see the penetration depths um, definitely it's become more shallower when you get a better donor motions because you spread the energy beam in a wider way in a spatial distribution. And if you see the, the top section for the melt pool and the melt tracks, you can see uh, inside of the melt pool, it's more stabilized. So it's a less dynamic motion from the melt pool when you go to donor the mode or you go to kind of a rain mode. So that's give a lot of benefit is because uh, to get a more robust process and release less spatter, you need a more stable melt pool uh, during the printing. So from a simulation, you, you can study different uh, beam profile, different uh, diameter for donut mode, and we see a lot of benefit when you go to um, a donut-shaped beam profile than traditional Gaussian beam. So what we do here is we actually take a remote laser from NLight, which is uh, AFX 1200, which is a programmable, which is, that's uh, another benefit is, you not only have simple remote, you have some lot of mode in between. So you have a total six mode, um, and we put it into one of our M2 constellator machine here. And that's something we like to study. One is, what is the actual beam profile what it looks like, put it into a commercial printer machine. And then we need to study can we really reduce the spatter or suit using a remote laser? And finally, we're going to verify how fast we can improve the speed. Because those are three things you really like to think about during the study. As you can see, uh, here's the example. We have the laser installed in the welfare machine. Um, and we did a characterization for the ring mode, which is index number six, at different power level. And also, another thing we would like to check is what is the the radio range, or you call that's what folks when you go to ring mode, because one benefit for single mode laser is it does has very long that's what focus because a very good beam quality, uh, which give you benefit when you have very stable Z tolerance between the height, and when come to ring mode, we we'll have to get something similar like that or even better. So we also find it's pretty stable in the Z ranges. I go to ring mode, which is a good sign for us. You can see the spot size. Go to ring mode, 
we can increase port size in our configuration is something about 270 micron. Switch to single mode, you get down to about 95 micron. So you can see sports size change um, from small to big, and also the beam profile change from a single Gaussian to a uh, ring uh, mode shape. The power level, I think, for ring mode, we can get up to close to 1100 volt. Uh, for single mode, we can be less power, but I think that our main focus is see how high power perform on the remote study. Here are some examples why we interested with the high temperature nickel based alloy because that's most material we're working with. For Incoma 718, it's very common nickel based super alloy. You can see this is the index 6, middle is index 3, and then index 2. From left to right, the energy is shrinking and concentrated more to the center. And you can see from the weld bit, um, definitely there's a more keyhole type of weld. Uh, show up. You can see the, some undercut or spatters from left to right when you shrink the energy to the center, more close to Gaussian beam. Uh, even you have a less power, 300 volt, you get a more undercut better than a 400 volt index number 6 remote. So that's the thing we like to um, do the test because that gives you indication when you go to higher power, you do like to get a more higher mode being for our material. Um, but it all depends on the application your material using. So like I said, the multiple mode, we really like to try different scenarios to see which one works best for your applications. So once I mentioned, it's important is we care about the spatter or you call the suit generation. So how we can using remote to reduce that? We need to test that. So. We did a lot of uh, study. Uh, this is a DOE study we did to compare the suit generation between single mode and ring mode. You can see this is a uh, printing study using our printer in the M2 machine. Um, actually, we have two lasers here. So one laser we still use single mode, another laser we use ring mode. So we can do side by side comparison, uh, which are more apple to apple, um, which comparison from here, and. <laughs> On the right side, um, actually the lower left, lower right corner, you can see the the surface is cleaner and the less suit spatter build up when you go to remote index number six. And also we have special experiment tool. We can actually collect the suit, we can measure the suit particles count during the printing in the real time. So I know the professor showed a very nice video which you do. Uh, simulation from your video to capture the suit. Here we do actually experiment to measurement study for that. So from our study we see almost uh, reduced by 50% of the suit reduction with way higher power. So our speed we can show about uh, 2.5x faster than single mode. We go to insert number 6 and the suit is about 2.2x uh, less. You know, I think it's about 40% of the original level. Um, one thing we do think um, we like to study a little bit more is how we can switch between mode because room mode has a lot of benefit that we talk about here. However, the spot size is bigger. So when you want to print your fine features, you still need to switch back to single mode. Uh, most likely, for example, surface uh, uh, contour, you still need to go to single mode. And for the internal, like a bulk printing, you will switch to ring mode. So how we can switch between those modes? And more importantly, when you switch, is there any transition zoom between those two modes? What the quality between those different zones? That's something we also like to investigate uh, for our future studies. Uh, here's a quick a picture uh, during our, our study I just shown before. This is actual printing using index number six at a uh, four power, I think, close to um, 100 volt um, with high speed. Um, and you can see here, uh, usually you can see some spatter spectra coming out, um, but from our testing, we see much less spatter showing up during the actual printing process, which is a very good sign. So I think for summary, what we found is with the remote laser, we think it's a, it's, a, it's a very great tool to help us change the beam energy profile distribution, which help you improve the efficiency for energy coupled into your material. Basically, you just don't want a very hot center to generate the keyhole weld. You want a more conductive type weld with more uniform energy distribution from there. In the same time, you also keep the benefit 
of the decimal folks and also the sport size you can leverage between different modes. You can change that. So one more benefit we found is since we are also building laser printing machine, so we like to get a simple integration laser saw. So I think this laser after our testing can be easy to plug in to test. Um, so there's a less integration work we need to do, which is a good thing for us to take and test that. So for summary, we demonstrate about two to three X per activity gain, and with about 50% of a suit reduction using the index number six mode uh, for the testing. But in the future, like I said, we like to test more different modes. And more importantly, how we can print a part with a mixed mode together. For some portion, you have like an index num uh, a single mode. For some other portion, you have an index number six, like which is ring mode. Or some of them, you have something in between. I think to do specific location dependent mode printing, that will give us a lot of benefit in the future. Not only for speed, but also for the quality. So that's for my talk. Thank you for your attention.